So today I'm going to show you the quickest, dirtiest way uh, to deploy your applications against a fail-safe uh, cl ACA cluster. And if it doesn't work, I'm going to be showing you how not to do that. Um, first things first, this isn't my regular voice. I just happen to be one of those resourceful people that can catch a cold in August. Um, what tends to happen, sometimes we get introduced to topics and they tend to be associated with things we don't really fully understand. For example, complicated financial transaction audit trails or corn price fluctuations in Burkina Faso. So I'm going to try and keep it real. Um, how many of you took the stairs up to the ninth floor? It's a trick question, we don't have stairs. So you've probably seen these bad boys scattered around on every floor. Basically what it does, you select a floor and some weird voodoo load balancer decides which is the most appropriate lift for you. It doesn't really work around lunchtime, so I think there's some sort of randomness going on. So I'm going to try and simulate how this happens and how potentially I think I can make it better. Um, what's a lift? Um, first things first, apart from being a big metal fart box that gets you from A to B, it's also a workflow. So let's look at potentially what some of the properties of a lift are. What does it need to know about itself? It needs to have an ID, it needs to know where it's going, it needs to know where it is, and it needs to have a queue of messages, of inputs. Um, how do you communicate with a lift? Uh, you can, it needs to somehow know when it's arrived at a particular floor. It can receive an instruction to go to. So I believe this is what each one of those terminals, those lift clients do. Um, and also, you need to have an interface to get uh, the queue that you then have to process. Um, it's state. A lift is going to be in a waiting state where it's just lying idle, waiting for commands. Doors are going to be open. It's either going to be going up or going down. I'm going to exclude states like alarmed because somebody's hit the alarm to have a cheeky cigarette inside or weight limit exceeded because somebody's brought their pet buffalo to work. <laughs> finite state machines. Finite state machines tend to have a, a typical pattern in place. So as you can see here, this lends itself quite nicely to that um, pattern there. So you're in a particular state, an event occurs, an action gets triggered, and you transition into a new state. Something like that. Something like that. Um, I tried to quickly model this last night as a finite state machine diagram. <coughs> but I was heavily medicated. So I seem to have missed out the state where the door is actually open. But that's more of a problem for the people and not so much for the lift. It'll still get to where it needs to go eventually. Um, and let's see if I can put some code up here. So finite state machines in, can everybody see that? But well, I don't know how to zoom. All right. Now, is that a bit clearer? Maybe you can try the analog zoom and come a little bit closer. Uh, so basically this is how I've modeled it. So the states are here. The messages, the protocol that we're going to communicate to the lift with is here. And we have uh, the attributes represented as a data field. Um, actors are quite nice. So ACA actors allow you to implement an FSM trait. So you can actually map this workflow quite easily. You could really do it with a a stateful actor and just have a big pattern match in your receive and try and map all of these states and then the transactions that happen but I think you can quickly end up with spaghetti code. Uh, so what does it look like? So every single um, state you can respond to actions. So when it's waiting uh, it receives a request to go to a specific floor. If it's already on that floor the door's open. If it's not then it's gonna take measures to get to that floor. Eventually the doors open and it starts to process the events and try to collate all of the floors it needs to stop at. Um, uh, you can add a timeout to each one of your states. So let's assume that the door takes three seconds to close and then it needs to process all of the events at that time. When that timeout gets triggered, it's then going to start either going up if it needs to go up or go down if it needs to go down. 
Now, the fun part. Right. When I was TDDing my lift, which is something I always do, <laughs> um, I found that they're actually quite complicated creatures. So if, there's, if as it's going up, more people want to go up, it needs to go up, pick those people up, and then carry on going up. If not, it needs to then go down and carry on going down. I'm not going to run those tests, because I also broke them last night. I got an amazing bug where sometimes my lifts go sideways. But <laughs> if anything, that's a feature. So for example, if somebody needs to go from the, from the ground floor to the first floor, just move them closer to the stairs that, <laughs> that we don't have. Um, right, so let, let's have a look at, this is pure filler now. So let me show you how this works, because we really need to illustrate this. So typically, it'll hit your node, it'll spin up an actor, that'll trigger a lift and it'll move up. Is that clear? Rush hour. So what you can do is, as all the messages start getting processed, three hours right there. So what's going to happen here, you can vertically scale to try and handle this. I thought this would be a lot quicker. So that's all fine. Starts spinning up new actors for every new lift message it receives. But eventually my sideways lift problem comes in. And the whole cluster goes down. Well, the whole node goes down. And then all of the lifts are down and nobody goes on lunch. So how do I plan to resolve this? There's several ways you can implement an ACA cluster. I think the most fun way, the most demoable way, at least, is to have a cluster-aware router that's going to be in charge of delegating all of the messages to the different lifts across all of my, my nodes. How do you set up a cluster? So let's take a walk through boilerplate town. So first things first, obviously, you need the jar. Very important, in your configuration, you need to have a seed node. With that, can everybody see at the back? Right. Well, just imagine <laughs> that this is localhost, which is what I'm going to do for now. Realistically, in your sandbox applications, you're not. You don't tend to know your IPs in advance. So depending on your Docker of choice, sorry, your container of choice, you can use some of the utils available to you. So AWS provides a nice interface to fetch IPs that exist in a certain range. Uh, you can use Docker. No idea how it works in Kubernetes, but it probably does. Um, and then the final thing you need to do is subscribe to these cluster events. I, I could have just shown that in code. Uh, yeah, so config, localhost. And in my system, I'm going to subscribe to the cluster events. Uh, OK, so what's a router? A router is very simple. So as opposed to a single-threaded actor, a router is multi-threaded. So that can handle all of your requests. And the way you define a router is just with a config. So you, as long as you have this config in your actor, you can define certain rules for your router. For example, I'm going to use round robin because I think, well, I'll explain what these things mean. So you can have different strategies of how the router delegates messages to the routees or the, the worker actors. Round robin just starts going through each one of the nodes and sending to any actor that's available. Random, God knows what that means. Uh, balancing pool, it'll try and be smart about it. So it'll have a look at how many of the actors you have idle or how much the load is or on a specific node and try and avoid it. Uh, very similar to smallest mailbox pool. Broadcasting is cool. Broadcasting allows you to send a message to every single one of your, of your actors at once. You probably wouldn't have that as a default configuration, but actually sending a broadcast is cool if you want to synchronize all of your actors at once. Um, maybe not so much in the lifts, because you, know, you don't really want to get five lifts to take you to the 10th floor. But imagine you have a shared resource in your application. A uh, typical example is when you're 
reserving a seat on a flight and somebody's playing about with the seats and picking an entire aisle for themselves, instead of constantly read writing to a database, you can probably broadcast that information to anybody else that's having a look at that page at the same time, for example. Uh, right. So theoretically, because this needs illustration, how that works, so the cluster where root will just delegate anywhere and the lift will move. And now let's see what happens at rush hour. <laughs> Starting to regret these hands. Right? So one of the key things is it doesn't always have to send the message to the actors in its own node. So it can just bounce around between, between all of the nodes you have in your cluster. Oh, the sideways lifts again. So, moment of truth, does this work? So here's some lifts I prepared earlier. I made them pretty, just in case they don't work. So I'm going to just start up a couple of lifts. So each one of these nodes, I probably should have shown that actually. So what I'm going to do in my application is I'm going to start I'm going to start a router and a worker in each one of my nodes. And then in my I'm also going to start one client. So I'm going to simulate one of those terminals making crazy demands. And I'm going to have a scheduler task so every 10 seconds or so is just going to send a random demand and I'm going to see how the router just balances all of that load out, or doesn't. So bear with me, because this works 100% of the time, 50% of the time. Um, when you first start up an actor system, it just sends, it just pipes some messages through. So these lifts aren't actually uh, going up or down. This is just uh, a notification. I'll tidy that up. Is that visible? Yeah, that's good enough. So much noise. All right, it's settled. So now I'm going to start shooting messages, and let's see where they end up. So the balancing pool should just, no, what did I use again? Round robin should just start randomly allocating them. I love introducing a little bit of unpredictability to a demo in front of an audience. Right, so right now, nothing is happening yet. It's just saying, okay, this node has come up. So th these are cluster events that you've subscribed to. So for example, if a node goes down, it's also important information. Because this is how the fail-safe part happens. So you're going to have messages going to dead letters, and you can process them how you want, spin up a new lift or whatever. So you can see here, somebody's gone from the third to the second floor and third to first. So here's where my crazy logic of if you're going down, pick up everybody else with you is happening. Currently on that lift, so the doors have opened on the first floor. This router has received a message, and I don't know who it's delegated it to yet. Should see a seven and a three somewhere. Well, that person can wait. <laughs> so eight to nine is happening up there. I'm really hoping that lift is in order. It's like meditation, you just watch this all day. This car crash of a lift system. Well, any questions thus far while this is doing its thing? You need to have at least one seed node. If you don't have a seed node, what you're going to end up with is a bunch of islands. And then you're going to have some really fun split brain situations that happen in your application. Um, unlike myself, what you really 
should do is have multi-JVM tests um, enabled that check how the cluster behaves and how messages uh, get sent across. What you can also do, instead of doing cluster aware routers, you can also have uh, cluster sharding. This is used more for when you have persistent actors. Right now, my lifts are fire and forget, or sometimes just forget <laughs> the looks of things. But the cluster sharding is more like if you have a concept, an actor that is going to be around for a long while. So it's a little bit more involved, the setup. So you need to give that actor an ID that you can constantly keep referencing. And instead of pointing to that actor, you point to the shard region, and it'll automatically find it for you. But it's not fun to show on, on this. That's all I've got.